seven. Thank you. All right. Well, wow. This is. Um, I'm so glad to be here and with you all. And I have um, the topic tonight is you know why don't we celebrate Christmas? But I'd first like to see where are you. Um, how many of you discovered there were some things about Christmas that you were just uncomfortable with? If the, if you felt there was something you just didn't feel quite comfortable, let's use the chat and put a number one in the chat if um, if that had come your way. You just, just didn't sit right with your spirit. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to ask, you know, how many of you do not celebrate Christmas? If you could put the two in the chat, if you do not celebrate Christmas. Okay. And if, you if you're not um, celebrating Christmas, I'd like to know how many years have you not been celebrating Christmas? Yeah, Connie, it made no sense to you. That's good. All right, seeing a lot of big numbers. 30 years, Josana, wow, 12, Judy. All right, six, and this is your first, so a year and a half. All right, that's good. To, it's kind of good to know where we all stand on this. Um, were you received well when your family, when you told your family members that you had um, that you saw Christmas in a different light. If you were received well, uh, let me know in the chat. Not at all. You weren't received well, right? How would you describe it? No. Since oh, since 1985. Good, Jean. They think I'm crazy. No. Okay, Natasha. All of your family agreed. That made it a lot easier. I'm sure. So you just agreed to disagree. Some of them still don't know. Okay, great. Mom and, and grandma on board, husband didn't agree with me, but submits to what I do around the house. All right, good. Okay, so now I know where you guys all stand. I am going to share my screen because tonight the presentation that I um that I'm going to give, I really felt like we needed a little bit of a visual. So I am going to load you up with scriptures. And, um, and so if you have a pen, I wanna write them down to just kind of confirm. I want you to know why, first off, why don't we celebrate? And I think I'm sure that like the first answer could be, well, it's pagan, but I'm gonna take you a little bit deeper and give you some things to think about um, tonight. So let me share. Oh, this is Gabriella. Oh, she can. Okay. Um, let me get on my screen here. Uh, Linda, if you're in the in tonight, could you reach out to Gabriella? Um, she's calling my phone, and maybe she's having a hard time coming on. I don't know if you could try yeah. to reach her. I'd appreciate I that. Thank I'll you. Do it right now. Okay. So the big question this time of year is uh, why do you not celebrate Christmas? You know, there are tons of um, memories associated with this time of year. Um, and but yet the majority of people will tell you that they celebrate Christmas because of uh, Jesus' birthday. Um, they'll say, well, you know, my family has always done it. I can't break tradition. Or if I, you know, came up with reasons for them not to celebrate, they say, well, God knows my heart. It is all about him. And even some would say, well, I don't want my children to miss, to miss out on all the fun and games. There, there are just so many traditions that are attached to Christmas that are based on pagan traditions, though. And we do hear the common reply is that um, really we don't we don't worry about all Santa Claus and all of that. We're focusing on Christ and it's his birthday and 
we're worshiping God now and, and celebrating Jesus. So there's nothing wrong with that. You can hear people say that. But you know what? Yahuwah says in his word that he does not want us to worship him with pagan practices. Regardless of what pagan practices were used for, Yahuwah says he does not want anything to do with them. Now, remember that Yahuwah has always um, distinguished between clean and unclean, good and bad, and it's always the device of the enemy um, to keep us away from Yahuwah. And we see throughout scripture, I mean, there has always been a battle of people worshiping idols. Have you, it seems like every story has involved, you know, idol worship or of some kind. Um, and so this is just putting something else in front of Yahuwah. In Deuteronomy 12, uh, 29, it says, when you, when you are thy Elohim shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them and thou succeedest them and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. So he's saying, listen, don't be snared by following them. Continue after that, they destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their Elohim, saying, How did these nations serve their Elohim? Even so will I do likewise. But this is the catcher. It says, Thou shalt not do so unto Yahuwah thy Elohim. For every abomination to Yahuwah which he hateth have they done unto their Elohim. For even their sons and their daughters. They have burnt in fire to their Elohim. What's, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add therefore to it, nor diminish from it. So even in the pagan, I mean, who is saying, do not do it. Only observe it how I have told you to. Um, we can see that Yahuwah, what Yahuwah says in Deuteronomy 4, 2, ye shall not add unto the word. In other words, don't bring in those pagan worships into my word, which I command you, neither shall ye diminish from it. Don't take away from my word, that ye may keep the commandments of Yahuwah your Elohim, which I command you. So when we take elements from pagan practices to use them in our remembrance, and worship of Yahuwah, we are actually disobeying and adding to how Yahuwah wants us to remember and worship him. Uh, many say, but that is under the law. Yes, and Yahushua says in Matthew 5, 18, for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Well, we heaven and earth are still around. So we still need to look at what Yahuwah says, how does he want us to worship him? So consider, um, consider this, many say that the, Hib the, Hebrew, the Hebrews were worshiping other gods when they built the golden calf. So many people say, well, the calf, you know, they're, they were worshiping other gods at the, at the bottom of Mount Sinai before, as they built this golden calf. But really, uh, looking a little closer into scripture, um, really what they were trying to do was worship Yahuwah in the way that they knew how from the time they were in Egypt. They were, they were trying to worship him the way that the Egyptians worshiped their God. They were impatient with, math, with Moses coming down from the mountain, right? So they, they built this, this altar and, I mean, this um, golden calf in um, worshiping. But in Exodus 32, did you notice this before? It says, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to Yahuwah. So it kind of confirmed to me that really what they were trying to do was worship Yahuwah, but they were worshiping how they knew from the Egyptians. 
there were intentions were to worship Yahweh with it, which is much like we can see today. Many take the practices from other religions and they try to apply them to Yah, but this is something he does not want us to do. In fact, he hates it. You know, when we see people, I, mean, I know, decorating the Christmas tree, oh, it's the star that Jesus, you know, that was above Jesus' manger, you know, that that is not true. That's not uh, um, something that, that, that's like taking um, something that we're trying to make it holy, which is totally actually from a pagan um, origin, which we're going to learn about in a minute. So knowing Yahweh doesn't change, right? He, he just doesn't change. So why would we want to do the exact same thing that, he, that made him strike down 3,000 people? Even though they were doing it unto Yahweh, they were raising the calf, uh, thinking they were doing it unto Yahweh. But what happened? 3,000 people were killed. And we can read in Exodus 32, 27. And he said unto them, Thus saith Yahuwah, Elohim of Israel, put every man his sword by his side and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses and there fell all of the people that day about 3,000 men. So we can also see um, during this time when Moses was speaking to the next generation um, on behalf of Yahuwah, um, they were going to go possess the land um, under Joshua. And he says this, and ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves of fire. And ye shall hewn down the graven images of their Elohim and destroy the names of them out of that place. Ye shall not do so unto Yahuwah your Elohim. He's saying, do not do, do not worship me like they are worshiping their gods. Do not. And um, he also instructed to not learn the ways of the nations. In Deuteronomy 18, when thou art come into the land which Yahuwah thy Elohim giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. You see, you can't add the pagan things into worshiping Yahuwah. If he did not want to be worshiped by, he, if he didn't want to worship, he didn't want to be worshiped by the ways of the pagan gods then. So what makes it, makes us think that it's okay for us to do it today? Again, he doesn't change. Now we also see in the New Testament in Galatians 4, he's saying, but then when ye knew not Yahuwah, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no mighty ones. We're talking about little gods. But now after ye have known Yahuwah, now that you know Yah, or rather are known of Yahuwah, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements? How can you turn, now that you know Yahuwah, how can you turn back to those little elves? to which ye desire again to be in bondage. Ye observe days and months and times and years. I fear for you, lest I bestowed upon your labor in vain. So even seeing these uh, verses, I wanna consider these verses. It says in Isaiah, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times that things are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So declaring the end from the beginning. And then in Ecclesiastics 1.9, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing underneath the sun. You may be thinking, what is this correlation? Well, this is showing how history repeats itself. What is repeating? How the people of Yahuwah stopped following his holy days and started following the holy days of the nations. Yahuwah has feasts that he wants his people to observe. His desire is for us to make his feast days our feast days. The problem is 
um, that just like with the golden calf, um, Yahweh's people brought many traditions from the nations and applied them to worshiping him. And sometimes they would mix them into his appointed times. Um, we can see the king of Israel uh, led the people astray into serving other gods. In fact, at one point, there were so many idols in the temple of Yahweh that the book of the law was lost and it wasn't found until the time of King Josiah. And I just, in, you can find that in 2 Kings 22, 8. And it says, and Helikiah, the high priest said unto Zaphon, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of Yahuwah. And Helikiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. I mean, many cannot imagine how the Israelites allowed so many pagan idols into temple in those days. There were so many that the book of the law got pushed aside. And um, so a question is, what are we allowing into our lives today under the umbrella of worshiping, serving, or even just remembering Yah today? What are we bringing into our lives under the thought of pointing to him, but is actually based in pagan traditions? It's a question to ask. Things that Yahuwah said not to honor or worship him with. We can see in Deuteronomy 12, he says, Thou shalt not do so unto Yahuwah thy Elohim. For every abomination to Yahuwah, which he hateth, have they done unto their Elohim. Even the, for even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their Elohim. I mean, they were sacrificing children unto Molech, uh, one of their gods. Now, regarding how the king of Israel brought it, idols and traditions of the nations into the temple of Yahuwah. It was King uh, Josiah who turned that around. And he went into the temple and all the land and, and um, demolished everything that wasn't of Yahuwah. Um, Second Kings 23, 5, it says, and like unto them, there was no king before him that turned to Yahuwah with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. And in Deuteronomy 6, 5, and thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. I'd like to encourage you to read um, when you can in Jos Josiah's, uh, the life of Josiah. And you'll find it in 2 Kings and in Chronicles there. Because he he was um, he cleaned out the temple and got rid of the people of the things in the land that were worshiping other elves. And I can share even in my own life when I came unto the understanding of um, idols um, and starting with Christmas, I went and I gathered all of my things together and I did not give them away. I destroyed them. We smashed them. And we burnt them and we tossed them because I would not want to influence anybody else to think that that would be okay. Um, and it, and I think that's a lot like how Josiah was in that temple. He went through the temple. He, we go through our homes. Um, even Matthew teaches about um, at times a cross. You know, you thought the cross was holy. You know, I'm, I'm, I have it on my wall. It's all about Jesus. Well, it isn't. It isn't. That came from a pagan origin. Um, so, you know, I know his wife and, and she loved to have the crosses all over. But when she figured that out, easily took him down because it didn't honor Yahuwah. So many say that they wouldn't do what Israel did by serving other gods. They're like, oh, I'm never going to um, serve another god and bringing them into the temple. However, if history we see that history is really circular, that it repeats itself. We need to take an honest look about what's going on now in this world now. Um, what are the tr traditions that people are holding on to today? Could it be time for us to clean out what we brought into our lives today from the gods of the nations, just as Josiah did? And look around. Sometimes even in the in 
you know, like if you have a storage and you, you'll go through it and you're like, wow, I still have this. I can't believe I still have this. I got to get rid of it. I don't even want to bring it into the home because our spirit is uh, not comfortable with that because we know that it's not of Yahweh. So up to the time of King Josiah, they brought all kinds of things into the temple. So what we have, so what have we brought into our traditions under the banner of remembering the savior that actually comes from pagan traditions? Uh, I want to begin to look at some traditions that many have never questioned, uh, but have always done them just simply out of tradition. And maybe this isn't you, but this could be people in your family as I'm, I'm sharing these things um, with you that you see that they, ha they just haven't been opened up to maybe understanding really the true origins or traditions um, that, ha that we're doing just because we think we're honoring Jesus. But traditions, these are traditions that Yahuwah does not want us to have anything to do with them because they came straight from pagan practices, and yet we find that we are applying them to him even today. And traditions like Christ's birthday is on December 25th, decorating the house with tree and all kinds of greenery, Santa Claus, the eight, deer, the eight reindeer and the elves. None of these traditions are mentioned or followed by believers in the, in the scriptures. So we're going to start, I want to just go through a couple of these with you, um, because knowing maybe you haven't investigated for yourself, or maybe you've heard about this, but I think it's important as we share, even with our families that, or friends or coworkers or whoever we're going, if somebody asked you, uh, why don't you celebrate Christmas? And you can share that you know, how you believe in the scriptures, it says not to mix tradition, pagan traditions with um, Yahuwah's uh, feasts or not to mix, not to bring them into your home, that you actually could share what the background of it is. So why is Jesus' birthday on December 25th? And I'm using Jesus because I know it's not Yahusha. Yahusha was not born on December 26. Just a little bit of history is that the reason Gentiles of today commemorate his birthday on the wrong date is because of what happened several years after the flood of Noah, which was in 2611 BC. So Ham, one of the three sons of Noah, had a son named Cush who later had a son named Nimrod. And Nimrod wanted to establish a lasting kingdom, which would be devoted to himself. In order to keep the majority of the people in the Eastern region and to complete and to compete with the newly discovered ancient culture in the ruin in the West or the ruins of Egypt, Nimrod sought to be worshiped and he began, began a big project. He got the idea from what he had heard was in Egypt. He began a building project, namely the Tower of Babel, with himself being the central deity. Now, there are certain sources, and, and a lot of this I, I gathered from the internet. So there are some sources outside the Bible that say that Shem, Nimrod's great uncle, which is the oldest son of Noah, tried to quell such ungodly worship by killing Nimrod and shattering his body parts across the countryside. But by Nimrod um, being recognized as a god, his wife, her name was Saturnalia, uh, would be recognized as being a goddess. And boy, did she love that title. She did not want to lose it and or the prestige that went along with it. So she declared Nimrod upon his mortal death that he ascended up into the heavens and became the sun god. And so therefore the project that he wanted to build was continued. She kept it kind of alive. And after about eight months later, um, 
remaining in the land of Shannara, Saturnella became pregnant. And she's like, oh no, what have I done? Because my husband's not here, right? I've got to rescue my situation. So she then claimed that her late husband, which is now the sun god, the sun, impregnated her with the rays of the sun and her son's name was Tammuz. And he was born on the winter solstice. So Tammuz was worshiped as the reincarnation of the sun god Nimrod. And his birthday is recognized up until this day on December 25th. Now, since Matt, since, uh, let's see. I think I, I got excited there. Let me go there. Okay, so since mankind was worshipped after the, um, since mankind was scattered after the worship of Nimrod had begun, each culture around the world had its local version of sun god worship, with their particular deity having their birthday being on the winter solstice. For example, the Egyptians um, had the god Ra. The Greeks had Zeus, and the Romans had Jupiter and Evictus, all having their birthday on what is now known as December 25th. All around the world, you'll find the local gods having a sun halo over, over their heads. You can see it on these three pictures depicting <clears throat> sun god worship. But we may ask ourselves, so why did, if that happened over there, in that part of the world, why does the Western world celebrate the birthday of Christ on December 25th? Well, you can blame the roots of the Roman Catholic Church, and here is our Roman Empire, Constantine. Constantine was looking for ways to consolidate and strengthen the Roman Empire, and part of his plan was to have only one state religion, and there were several pagan religions being practiced in Rome at that time. And Constantine himself was a worshiper of Mithra, the Persian god of light. And since Constantine could not stamp out the original, uh, I'm calling it Christianity, he, he sought to merge all religions of his empire into one, which all would have to accept. So think of the Jews back then too, you know, that's encompassing these people. Constantine did not like the Jews. He wanted to have nothing to do with them really. So certain sources say that Constantine actually embraced Christianity, but no, he didn't. He continued to worship Mithra while his kingdom was forced to embrace the Roman universal Catholic paganism. So even though he was really like the um, trying to establish the Catholic Church, behind the scenes, he was still worshiping Mithra. Um, so um, Constantine arranged to have a council meeting. Um, it was called the Council of Nicaea, I think, N-I-C-E-A. And it met in uh, 325 A.D., but it really was just a charade because he wanted people to think that they were all getting together under one um, religion, but it, Christianity wasn't really represented in there, in there. In fact, they had Gentile pagan bishops and priests and various religions. Um, they were the voice of the council. So how could pagan Gentiles properly, I mean, they couldn't really, interpret the scriptures and what what um, the, the Jews were banned from this meeting. And Constantine at that point wanted to remove everything that was Jewish from his new state religion. And you know, who was Yahusha? He wanted to remove Yahusha out of the picture. I think at that point too, that's when the Shabbats were taken off of the seventh day, Saturday and put onto Sunday through Constantine, because he didn't want anything, his religion, the Catholics, to look anything like the Jews or anything that uh, Yeshua was trying to promote. 
So let's move on. So that is kind of the history about why people, the December 25th, we really look at December, that he, he wasn't um, born on that day. Some people say he was um, consummated. You know, Mary and, and Joseph got together on that day because Yeshua was born in the fall. And, and you know, maybe around Feast of Tabernacle time. So I want to move on to Christmas trees. So the origin of the Christmas tree can trace to pagan traditions. So, well, let me back up just a little bit. So in reference to Yeshua's birthday being on December 25th, you know, you can see so many things like the, the wise men and the manger and, the, and you can see how they were trying to bring scripture into this um, birthday of um, Christ and promoting it, but they had things going on in the background. They were bringing that those pagan sun god worshippers, I mean pagan sun gods, birthdays into this and trying to make it all holy. Um, and so a lot of people say, "Oh well, I was just I'm just worshiping, I'm I'm celebrating it because of Christ." So I have to say, is that really true? Is that really true? So going to Christmas trees, the origin of the Christmas trees can be traced to pagan traditions. People in the Northern hemisphere used evergreen plants to decorate their homes, particularly the doors to celebrate the winter solstice on December 21st or 22nd. The day, the winter solstice is the shortest and the night, the longest. And traditionally, this time of year is seen as the return in strength of the sun god who had weakened the who had been weakened during the winter. And the evergreen plants served as a reminder that the god would glow again and summer was to be expected. The solstice was celebrated by the Egyptians who filled their homes with green palm rushes in honor of the god Ra who had the head of a hawk and wore the sun as a crown. In Northern Europe, the Celts decorated their Druid temples with evergreen bows, which signified everlasting life. And further up North, the Vikings thought evergreens were the plants of, of uh, Baldur, the God of light and peace. And the ancient Romans marked the winter solstice with a feast called Saner Saturnalia, thrown in the honor of Saturn, the god of culture. And like the Celts, they decorated their homes with evergreen bows. But what does Yahuwah say about the trees? All right, Jeremiah 10, 2. Thus saith Yahuwah, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed in the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, and they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it moveth not. So even here in this picture, I thought this is so interesting that this hieroglyphics is showing they're decorating a tree. It's crazy. So let's move on to Santa Claus. Santa Claus, actually, again, we see there's a Odin is one of the major gods in the Norse paganism. It shares many physical characteristics with the image of Santa Claus. In the winter solstice or Yule, another name for it is Yule, was a time when Odin led a hunting party known as the Wild Hunt in the sky with his eight-legged horse named Slefner. The 16th century poet Edna said the mythical horse could leap great distances, a trait of reindeer po possesses. Children would leave their boots by the chimney filled with carrots and hay to feed Slefner. And legend has it that whenever Odin flew by, <clears throat> he would leave gifts by their boots. Remember Yahweh, what Yahweh said, do not worship him with their ways, 
do not worship him with their ways. Yet people have incorporated the ways of the pagans into the worship of Yahuwah. You know, we have a choice. In Joshua 24, 15, it says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve Yahuwah, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the Elohim, which your father served, that were on the other side of the flood, or the Elohim of the Amorites, who chose the land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve Yahuwah. Yahuwah wants us to worship him in his ways, not the ways of the pagans. He doesn't want us to mix. He's always been so distinguished between clean and unclean. There's a distinction. So question, how do we manage this time of year? How do we manage this time of year? You know, I know in my um, workplace, I work in a hair salon and I have chosen, I do not decorate. I do not, I keep it very clean and simple. Um, I have people ask me, you know, are you going to, uh, the other day, one of my clients asked me, are you going to decorate? I'm like, no. You know, and I, I get questions. Um, now my clients are used to me not celebrating because I shared with them many years ago when I didn't. It is an uncomfortable conversation for them, but not for me. Um, so if somebody asks me, I really try to do it in honor why I do not observe it. I had even today, someone asked me, um, you know, what are you doing for the holidays? And I, I'm like, you know what? I, I really don't celebrate Christmas, but I'm going to enjoy my children and my son. I'm, we're going to have a really good day. And um, she brought up about, um, well, wow, there's so many people that has so many different points of view on, on things, you know, I guess it's just how you see it, you know? And I just, and, and she's Catholic. So I knew where she was coming from. But um, I think that as we move forward in, um, there's even situations with our own family. So when I introduced to my mother that I was, would not be um, celebrating um, Christmas, she was hurt, honestly. She, she couldn't understand it. She would even make my, cause she loves crafts. She always makes a present for, my son. And if it was wrapped in, you know, now she, she wants to give him a present, but it she'll wrap it in everything and like just a piece of paper. So it's, it doesn't, it's not a Christmas present, but you know, I've, I've shared with her, you know, mom, we have 364 days of the year that you can shower Joshua with a gift. And I know he loves what you do for him. And we so appreciate it. But in honor of God, and because she only understands him as God, um, that is why we're not doing it. We're, why we're celebrating. So I'd appreciate if you would honor us also in that way. So things have kind of um, gotten better between her and I. Um, my family does have a Christmas party. In fact, I just heard on the 19th, they're all getting together. She said, but Tamara, it's not Christmas. We're just all going to have enchiladas and we're going to play games. And, and I made pillowcases for all of it. Well, I, I said to Joshua, Joshua, what do you think? And he goes, mom, it's totally a Christmas party. She's trying to make you think it's not, you know? And I'm like, I know. And we just declined the invitation this time. Um, but we'll, we go to other events that they have um, that are on different time, other birthdays or, or other, you know, things that they um, celebrate. So we're, we still respect them because we know that our walk is so important and we want to do it in love and honor, but yet we want to stand up. We have chosen in our household to observe Yahuwah's feast and to follow his ways in, in our home. I would love to open up the floor a little bit and ask if anybody has any questions or if you'd love to share, how did, how has it gone for you? How has it gone for you either this season or maybe when you, you made that commitment, I'm not gonna do it anymore. How did others receive you? Linda? 
Shalom, everybody. Um, gosh, I, I remember that first Christmas, okay? And it, it actually came to me, a dear friend from Torah to the Tribes from way back uh, sent me a book. And it was the Torah Blessing by Mary Huck. And then she said, I need you to watch a DVD by Jim, by Jim Staley. And it was called Truth or Tradition. And along with it, she said, be sure and watch this other one. It's, and it's called um, Identity Crisis. Well, I got to tell you, between her praying for me and watching these two DVDs, I was so convicted, but here is the praise that I will, I will always praise my father for this. Oh my gosh, I called my daughter. They lived in Illinois and I said, Kelly, I'm really questioning Christmas. She said, what do you mean, mom? I said, you know, I'm going to put a couple of CDs in the mail to you. Would you watch them and let me know what you think? I put them in the mail. It was all I could do to to, to not say anything to her about it. I'm just going to send you these and you look at them. Well, long story short, see the truth too. That was the last Christmas and uh, my family, my extended family, my brother and his family, uh, sister and her family, very kind, very respectful. They're like, wow, gosh, we don't understand, but okay, you don't want to do Christmas, don't do Christmas. Well, here's another praise report. My sister, who had been a Sabbath in the Seventh-day Adventist church, watched the DVDs. She said, I can't do that anymore. So see, it's, it, it is a spirit that works, you know, and like you said, Tamara, oh my gosh, we have to be kind, we have to be respectful. And because they're watching our walk. And if what you're producing isn't love, they don't want it. So yeah, um, I haven't had Christmas for many, many, many years. And the people I work with know that I don't do Christmas. And I've even had them say, we know you don't do Christmas because it's not in the Bible. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> these are Christian people. And they're telling me, we know you don't do Christmas because it's not in the Bible. And I'm like, Father, use those words to convict him. <laughs> Shalom, everybody. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, even the simplest way, you know, I know our walk, you know, I look at, and I've shared this with many before, you can have different types of relationships, okay? An acquaintance, we can have a, a friend, we can have an intimate friend, we can have a husband, you know, those things are um, also in relationship to Yahuwah and how our relationship with, his, with him. We can just have him as an acquaintance, like the many that, that are in the Christian uh, understanding, they're, they go to church every Sunday, once a, once a week, and they, they're doing their good deed. Uh, they're getting their fill. But they really don't know him to the depth. You know, it's not like an intimate relationship that you have with your husband or, you know, as we have journeyed through and we've reached this point, I believe that you who has revealed his mysteries line upon line, precept on precept to each and every one of us to come to this conclusion that of what we are, what we have learned. But there are many in our walk uh, or in our path that are still in that acquaintance mode with Yahuwah. And so they, they are not, and that they're happy there. They're really happy there. So sometimes just talking to them in a simple, um, you know, like Linda said, a, Hey, I'm just following the Bible, what the Bible says. And they say they are following the Bible, but yet they, they're not looking at it like that. So I think um, it, 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 our words, we want to be, I don't, I think I want to encourage us that, you know, like when I got excited about Yeshua's name and when I got excited about the Melchizedek priesthood and I was just like, oh, you got to hear it. You got it. I even scared my messianic friends. They were like, oh, uh, don't hang out with Tamara. She's too much. 
you know, and, uh, but I think if I would have handled it differently, maybe they would have received it because I did get shut off right away from them. They, they thought that, um, yeah, that I'd gone off the deep end. I don't know, but, um, <laughs> we, it, thank you, Linda, for sharing that April. So, um, I'm pretty new at not celebrating Christmas, but um, I was always really weird about Christmas anyways, because my mom would always do Santa and I would always be like, I would tell my kids Santa doesn't exist. And she'd be like, here, Santa, take a picture. And we like, I literally have a picture of my daughter when she was young, arguing with Santa. She's like, my mom says you don't exist. And I still have the picture in their face to face, just arguing like you're not real and so we've always had this tiff about it um and you know celebrating all of these things you know uh but it was well this will be our second year so i guess 2020 october of 2020 i um when i was going to traditional sunday church I taught our Wednesday nights. Also, I taught um, the kids and I used to have these two families that would always come in during Christmas and Easter and they, you know, be telling everybody we don't celebrate that we don't celebrate that. And I remember looking at one of the other teachers and like, uh, that's weird. Like, why are they even here? Like, that's like the birth of our <laughs> Savior. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So I always wondered for, you know, it was like probably a year or so, a couple of years that I was, you know, engaged in these kids. And I never really asked them why. I just thought it was odd. Um, well, when the p pandemics and stuff ended, I, we started hanging out. Our kids were the same age and, you know, I was trying to keep in touch with some of the kids and I got brave enough one day to ask her. And I'm like, I need to ask you this. And I'm all nervous. I'm like, why do you go to church and you don't celebrate Christmas? And she's like, well, it's not Jesus's birthday. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> and I was like devastated. And I come home and I talk to my, so I talked to her that day and I come home and I do all this research and I found out a lot of stuff that you went over tonight is like all stuff that I read. And I found out all of the, like a whole lot of things that church does that not really in the bible and so I looked at my kids and I'm like guys I don't think we can do Christmas anymore and they're like you lied to us like oh, how could you do this stuff and I'm like they lied to me <laughs> was just this whole big ordeal where we were just like for like a month but we're like I mean that was in October and we're like we're not we're totally not doing this like this is disgusting like I can't and so like we just quit it but it has been my husband doesn't have the same faith that I do so I'm like praise report because he just kind of went along with it and was like well okay I don't get it but whatever you know I guess I'm gonna give it up too so I'm grateful and I'm so thankful but at the same time, there's still like a struggle just, you know, like, well, what do we do? You know, like, can I, can my parents can, and so we just kind of like are, I mean, we were somewhat of an outcast anyways, but <laughs> just like, yeah, so, you know, yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just grateful that he does. And I'm grateful that, you know, my kids were not too devastated and like, we just kind of are still learning and in all of just all of the things that well, yeah that's awesome that's awesome hey buddy is that new hi Dathan is that Dathan I, that's Devin Devin hi Devin <laughs> well that is that hello there buddy um you know and that is one thing I did want to bring up the topic of children you know because children are seeing all these lights and they're seeing all of this stuff and, you know, really, it, the lie of Santa Claus, it, it really, to me, it, it makes me angry, you know, and I think that, that that discovery when a child is young from, you know, they're going along with it, and then let's just say, I don't know, what age, 10, 11, they're like questioning that Santa Claus, and then they find out their parents have lied to them all this time. How good is that for them? right? How good is that? But one of the things that Yahuwah, you know, has orchestrated us, we get seven feasts throughout the year, right? 
we get to make our children um we get to help them have celebrate that and i have always made it a great time for joshua i've always made you know from the, when he was little i would we would have a special you know i don't know i, I mean i know going to sukkot i had this big old whiteboard and i'd put all the days of sukkot and i'm like Okay, bud, we got to plan. What what do we need when we go camping? We need a suitcase, a sleeping bag, and we would make this list. And then we would, oh, what are we going to eat? What are we going to eat? Day one, two, and three, and we did all that. What kind of crafts do you want to do? I mean, and we would we would actually plan this, and it it built up that anticipation of going to Sukkot. It was always like that's probably his his favorite um, event. But even there, when I when we did uh, Passover, Passover, I did go through the, um, the the ten plagues with the children because it's it was fun. I wanted to share with them the you know where we came from and why we're here, where we're at. And it, if you can, when you have little children, grandchildren, or or children, it is um, look at it that, those ways. Because really, they don't miss out on anything. Yeah, the lights are pretty. Yeah, you know, maybe people are um, are having parties. But really, when we share the truth with them, we are parents that tell our children the truth. We don't lie to our children. And they um, respect you more. They, you know, now we don't have the stress, do we? We don't have the stress of the present buying. We don't have the financial problems of it. We, it, on our day, on um, because I am closing the salon for three days during around that weekend, we're going to have fun. We're going to have family time. I want to, you know, go hiking. I want to go do, I, we honestly take that advantage of that time and have a lot of good family time because we're off <laughs> and we can. Uh, Connie, thank you, April, for sharing. Yeah, I was remembering we did Christmas for a long time. And I was remembering one time my son was about five and we drove past the house that had lots of lights. And he goes, oh, they must love Jesus very much <laughs> because they were so decorated. But I, I wrote, um, it's so good to read the scriptures to find the truth rather than to read the scriptures to support our traditions and denominational teachings. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it is, it yeah. is. Yeah, for sure, for sure, good, thank you. Suzanne. So yeah, um, you know, April being treated as an outcast was never easy at first, especially if, you know, we were, um, preconditioned to be accepted, you know, all the time kind of thing. But now mm. I see that being an outcast, I take it as a compliment. <laughs> it's like, okay, now I know that I'm in the truth. But uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, I believe that one of the things that help us wake up to these things is that the, the, the repetition and there seems to be no life in it and there's no substance. Yeah. Oh, you froze, Suzanne. Oh. Um, why am I always, it just seems that around this time of year, um, I rack up a lot of debt and by January, we're all paying it and maybe it takes until March to pay off whatever. So, you know, there's really, you know, there's a lot of other things that really is it is Torah based. Yahweh doesn't want us to be in debt. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, Sister Yahira, Tamara is so creative when it comes to uh, you know being how to to show to show about to our young ones. You know, make it fun, make it help them remember it to such a yeah. But yeah, go ahead. That was it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tamara. Yeah, you know we are called to be set apart, aren't we? We feel, I feel like that's an honor. <laughs> I'm good. Set me apart. Uh, Yahira. 
Yes, it's true, Tamara. You're so creative. We're, I'm really enjoying your class, <laughs> your your children's <laughs> class. So definitely, and yeah, just I, I just asked if you guys have tips. Like I've been telling my kids, like when we pass by the trees and stuff, I said that's ball tree, but I guess that's Nimrod tree, right? Not ball. I'm like that's ball tree. No ball <laughs> tree. No, you know, like they're three and four. Um, but definitely, last year was the first year that I stopped celebrating. Christmas and I purposely it, because my mother-in-law and my husband at uh, Christmas has been something very deep for them and my husband comes from a family that they're not very close there there was a lot of uh you could say chaos but the time that was like magical for them was Christmas so in that emotional aspect I had to be sensitive to that but my convictions, my convictions. So I ended up actually purposely going back to my country, Colombia, South America. So because since my grandma and my mother, they're on board, I was like, I just want to avoid December being here. And when I was in Colombia in December, um, I ended up just uh, something happened and then I had to go to someone else's house around that time. And that person was celebrating Christmas, but I was praying for that person and her daughter ended up while I was there telling her mom you know this and this and that so eventually like she was just like this she started talking to me about it and I started telling her so I knew I had to even though I was like what am I doing here in this house with all this decoration I'm like I was I flew all the way here in December to avoid this and I'm literally here in this house <laughs> but I started just to pray about it and look through her daughter she opened up her eyes and when she went to go eat dinner with her friend, like I could tell she was kind of like, not even like, mm, I'm just going to go. Cause I told her, I said I was going to go, but there wasn't that joy when I first came in and it, and I really didn't have to do much. Like she knew I didn't. And I was just going to stay home with the boys. And she saw that I didn't give any gifts, nothing like that. And, but just by that prayer, you know, uh, the Ruach like had her her daughter like being in the same uh accord and and it was great but anyways that year in Colombia and uh South America is a country that you could say is a, a high in Catholics there's a lot of idolatry a lot of alcohol a lot of partying and when we the next morning the 25th went out there were like five men drunk there was loud music all night I was like it was like three four in the morning I was trying to you know sleep the boys were fast asleep there was music all around me um and she and then I told her in the morning when we saw these men that were drunk out because it's a it I'm like you know is this the spirit I'm like you think this is the spirit of our savior you know this drunkness and you know and someone got killed around the neighborhood things happened and I'm like I was able to sense the spirit like behind it, you know, and, um, and unfortunately, like she, she, I mean, fortunately, she saw, she saw that, you know, she saw that. And she now this year, she's not celebrating Christmas. Now coming here in the United States, I'm not gonna lie, when I sometimes go to the stores, and I start hearing that music, like it has a way of turning <laughs> my heart. And right away, I'm like rebuking it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but definitely, it's not something I desire but I'll tell you like just the music is like wow how much it strings that core that is wanting to like draw draw that emotion in but I cannot like it's a conviction I cannot put a tree in in the in the lights up and and like I said I'm, I'm really telling my boys you know talking to them and, and like I said if any moms have just little tips you know that I could do so that they could understand from three to four that would be great because you know more ideas is great but anyways um I will ask for prayer because, lo and behold, the week of, of that week, my in-laws are coming. And I was a bit uh, not comfortable with that. However, my, my mother-in-law did tell my husband, you know, I know Jahida doesn't celebrate Christmas, but that was just the only week we got off. So I saw it fell even on a Sabbath. So I'm like, of course, like, well, I, I start the Sabbath on Friday evening. So I'm like, well, either way, like I'm going to have my family start the Shabbat. There's not any, none of the Christmas stuff. Nothing's going to be in my household. But I do want prayer so that my essence, because sometimes I could be very aggressive and, and, and head on, you know, but I think 
Yah has been calling me to be more, more, more servant like, and just praying. And and if you if you ladies could put me in prayer for that week, because I want to show my mother in law who you know had my husband grow up in the whole Christmas spirit and the Santa Claus and all that stuff, for her to see something beyond that that she could see Yahweh through my children, that they're happy children. They have gifts, but they earn their gifts throughout the whole year. You know, if they, I see they want something, that's a, a a chart that I do that they have to earn their gifts, you know? So it's like my kids are not deprived from things, you know? Fortunately, Yah has blessed us that way. So they're able to to have their, their toys throughout the year. It doesn't have to be just once a year and they don't have to like fix their mind on that specific date. Oh, it's Christmas time and all the excitement. But I do want prayer so that my boys and I, through our example, that my mother-in-law and the week that she's going to be here, she's going to be here with me from the 22nd through the 26th, you know, from South Florida, that she could see something more, you know, without me needing to tell her, because she already knows. And I already sent her videos of daily and all this stuff, but it's just like, you know, it's something that is she doesn't want to let go. But I want through the example of us to, <laughs> sorry, okay. through the example, you know, so if, that could be if you ladies could pray for me. But anyways, that has been my experience with the whole Christmas in the past two years and stuff. And and I I, I already see the blessings, you know, in 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 being obedient, even if you like it. But being having that obedience to Yah, to letting it go and seeing the, I want to say a, a bit favor and and the cover like that you feel that you have in your family because he sees that we're obeying him and putting him first above our own desires and man tradition. Mm -hmm. Great, I uh, thank you, Yahari. That's a lot of good stuff, and I will. I'm adding you to our prayer list for sure. And I, I mean, just knowing you and your boys, my, I, how can you not help but see the light of Yahusha in your children? And, and I know that they will shine bright while those, um, the in-laws are, are there and they will see that and be attracted to that and, and be like, wow, these children are just, I mean, there is a difference between children that are raised and understanding the ways of Yahuwah, you know, versus those that are that are not. And um, they look set apart, they act set apart. And, you know, even um, you can see it in just even in their countenance, you know, really, that definitely will. Thank you for sharing. Uh, you Linda. For yes, I wanted to pick up on what Yahira had said. Thank you for that, Yahira. Hey, Linda, for sure, we're going to be Linda, praying for you. Linda, yeah. can you talk a little louder or a little closer sure. to your mic? Sure, let me get closer here. I just want to thank you, Hira, for what she said. And also to say, it was also um, hard for me to understand that it's not just that we don't want to do Christmas. There's a spirit attached to all of these things that people do during this season, right? When I understood cult spirits attached to all this, I mourned for my family um, and tried to explain, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't received. So that's okay. You know, I leave that in the father's hands. Um, and then to say too, that my sister Kim, while she dropped Christmas, said, but not for me, you know, and started keeping the righteous cycles, the, the feast days, her family did not. So she is in a position every year where her husband wants a tree, wants all of the holiday things that Christmas brings. And this year she has her son coming for Christmas. And she's like, this is very hard for me because I love my son and I don't get to see him that often. And I can't enter into these things, but through the year, three years now, she hasn't done Christmas. So they know how she feels 
And Yahira, I know how you're feeling. <laughs> and probably some of the other sisters here do too. But here's the thing. We love Yahweh, right? And we want to honor him. And so I think we honor him the most when we testify to other people, not that they're doing something wrong, but that we're doing this out of love for him. This is, you know, this it's, it's idol worship. You know, it doesn't just pagan doesn't just mean old. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when I first came into some understandings, I'm like, oh yeah. No, no, no. Those, those are dark occult things and it's worshiping other gods. So anyway, I just wanted to say that and Thank you, Ahira, again for telling us all that. Yeah, it was really good. And yeah. thank you, Linda, good for sister. yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. That it is there is a spirit. Okay, I do see that. Like even like Yahira was saying, like the songs. You know, there is some ties to some of these things, and and it is important that actually I I repented of of. Um, celebrating Christmas of putting something else above Yahuwah. It isn't that it is. And when I, and you're right, when you say pagan, well, in this world right now, we don't maybe look at things pe like they're pagan. Um, like we see in uh, some of the pictures that I showed you, but really it is idol worship and the, and the um, spirits that are attached to that. We want to break those. We want to break them off of us. And yes, I, I understand. Like, I'm going to add Kim to our prayer list, Linda, um, that it Thank we you. can be in hard positions, but we it is our love of Yahuwah and us breaking off those, those um, ties to what we thought were good. You know, we thought maybe, I mean, I know in my family, I was raised a Mormon. We were celebrating Christmas, not because of Santa. We were celebrating because of Christ. But even in doing good can be bad. We have to know the origin, the, what's behind it. And, um, and when people say, well, God knows my heart. But what does it say in scripture? Our heart is wicked. And if he knows our heart, he knows that we are sinners. And that's why he gave us Yahusha so that we can get cleared up and return to him every single day, every single moment that we make, a, you know, we're stepping out of the line, we can return to him. And um, so thank you for that, Linda. That's so true. It, there is a spirit that goes, but we need to break those bonds. Break that, break that. Uh, Megan. One thing I also want to add is meeting people where they're at and just trying to approach that and not being bold in your face all the time or the message is not going to get to them of course it's kind of funny because people know I don't celebrate Christmas or the holidays um and that I'm a feast keeper and a sabbath keeper uh, but every single year I still have to admit that I don't celebrate Christmas to people and then it's funny because this year Everybody is now at me. Well, the first year is always the hardest because if anybody doesn't know, I lost my mom back at the beginning of September. And it's like, but I don't celebrate Christmas. So it doesn't really affect me to be grieving during the holidays, which a lot of people are thinking I am. And, um, but yeah, so it's just trying to, yeah. Awesome, kind of a hard one to touch on with that one because my thoughts were always like well I entered the fall feast kind of without my mom beside my side and now it's like everybody's coming at me about Christmas this and Christmas that and what are you doing for Christmas and it's like I'm just going to be doing my normal thing whatever's going to be that day being just in the word and I won't be going to any dinners if you're going to invite me scenario. Yeah. You know, it is challenging, Megan, because I can totally understand how when people, when you lose someone who's so dear to you, that 
others want to be sure you're not feeling left out or that you're feeling lonely. So they tend to overcompensate sometimes in, in that when you would rather just not, you know, I mean, you want to stand for what you believe and, and, um, but they're, they're trying. And, and I, I can appreciate the love that like my mom trying to push me to go on the 19th to their family thing. I appreciate her love and her wanting me to feel like I'm not alone, but you know, what she doesn't understand is I don't feel alone. I know you who is with me. He, he's with me every step of the way. And, um, and there, and she's just doing it out of concern, you know, for me, but yes, you know, it is Shalom. We have Shalom in, in a, in a, place where the world is going crazy around us when we have this understanding. Um, Natasha. I just wanted some advice, really. Um, this is the first year that we won't be celebrating Christmas, and I've got a three-year-old daughter. Um, I was an unmarried mother when I had her, and I was living in the world, so we're very new to this, and um, I had um, separated from her father. We've been together since I was 24, and I'm now 41. Um, and you know we're fine with that she's doing really well but she's quite funny at the innocence of children she came up to me a few weeks ago and she said mum why you didn't tell me santa's coming and i said oh well santa's not real and she said oh okay and she just ran off and off she goes and i heard her talking to her father by the trampoline and he was talking to her about christmas because um they're not believers and he'll be having christmas with his family um and she said no dad you know who she doesn't like christmas <laughs> so it was quite funny to listen to her but um, I guess when I first started, you know, I said I wasn't going to do Christmas um, because things are a little bit, I, I guess, bitter between us. I had said to Scott that he could take April um, because he couldn't explain to his mother why, you know, I won't let her do Christmas anymore. And I'd sort of said at the time, yes, but now I'm feeling a little bit convicted about it and I don't really know the right way to go around cancelling that, I guess. So how old is she? Three. Three. Mm. Yeah. That, and, and that is challenging when you have one person that doesn't look at it the same way as you do. I mean, I, I to be honest with you, my um, husband saw it first. It took me three years to come around. But throughout those three years, even though he celebrated it, I mean, I celebrated it. He loved me through the process. Now he did separate himself as far as he, he said, I'm not going to help you with any Christmas trees, you know? Um, and I bought the biggest one I could and I got it stuck in the door and he had to help me get it through the door. And he was like, Oh, I told you I'm not going to do it. I said, it's not decorating it. It's just getting it through the door. And he ended up helping me and then he had to have help me stand it up. But he, he didn't come at me as you're doing it, you know, you're a sinner or, or just, you know, really coming through. If, I mean, I, honestly, for me, I would teach your daughter the truth of Yahuwah, Yahusha. And I would share with her that, um, you know, that what he says, that's how we want to observe. We want to observe the you know, feast days of him. And these are what they are. And these are what they represent. And, these, and, and just educate her on that, teach her that. And then share, you know, I know that your father is doing, you know, Christmas, but when, you know, we want to follow what Yahuwah says. And mm -hmm. so I think that through that teaching her of the truth, that that will impact her so that when she does go over there, because you can't change them. You, mm. you can't change that environment over there. You can only help your daughter see the light of Yahusha and that that is a facade. And I would definitely be praying over her going and while she's there and really, um, yeah, encouraging, um, encourage you to do that. Uh, Linda, what, how about you? Oh, yeah, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> I just wanted to say, you know, for some of you here, and I didn't see how many in the chat, maybe this is new to you, but I didn't want anybody to think that it was easy for me, that all of us had an epiphany. No, I 
struggled with it. I moved all my things in my garage where they sat for months because it was like memories, things my children had made me in school, uh, pictures of past Christmases, and that was hard. But you know, the longer they sat in the garage and I looked at them every time I got in the car and pulled it out, I looked at those Christmas things and I'm like, I am just going to throw these in the dumpster. And I finally got to that point where I threw them in the dumpster and I'll tell you it was freedom. I've never looked back. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. And I don't miss it. And it's so true. There is shalom during this season because we're not entering in to these world cycles. It's just, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Thank yeah. you guys. I and, and that's so true that not, you know, it, it, sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes it's just, uh, you know, you, you hear and you're like, what, how can that be? You know, and even your friends and family, coworkers, people around you that see you're not observing and you just share little seeds of why you don't, you know, that will grow in their own lives too. But the, the real thing for me is that I love Yahuwah and whatever he says, that's what I want to do. And so if he's saying, you know, don't mix these idol worship with my, with me, then I definitely do not want to mix. I want to keep that distinction. Cheryl. Mine is off topic from the Christmas, but the uh, I was going to write down when you said to read about uh, Josiah, uh -huh. and all I got was Second Kings, and then and then it flips screen. Could we? Oh, it's it's Second. Could you? Okay, let me give it you back. Because it, it talks about him twice in scripture. It's on. Um, Second Kings 22, 1 through Second Kings 23, 30. And then you'll find it again in Second Chronicles 34, 1 through Second Chronicles 35, 27. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Are you hi, Ryan? Hey, I do have a question. Um, like, what do you, what would you ladies do if someone hands you a card or a gift? So, anybody have a, a point of view on that, or what do you do? I'm going to call on Lisa. Like people know, like people already know that, <laughs> you know, we don't celebrate, but yeah, I, like, I know what I don't you're have saying. The control. I don't have the, I have the control of definitely none of that coming into my house and things like that. Right. It's my house are coming over, but at the end, I don't have the control if there's gifts that are is given. So I'm curious to see if, you know, it's, it's a, believe me, for me, I would have gone back to Colombia and just be with my mom and not have to deal with this, but for this yeah. year, I feel like this is what I had to. Yep. Uh, Lisa, what's your opinion on that? Or what, how do you handle it? Um, I discern, first of all, who it's coming from, because I've been already in my seventh year now, not celebrating Christmas. Most people know that it's a non-issue. It's like, it, it not giving me gifts but occasionally it will happen like a client will give me a gift or something like that and they don't know and it's discernment it's sometimes it's just thank you <laughs> the, they'll I have a home office they'll see I don't have a house decorated for Christmas too but um it it's simply that um I'm fortunate I I live farther away from um, my family, except for my children, which they were young um, teenagers and adults when I started following the feasts. Um, so they're just like 
oh, of course mom's doing this. So it's like, it's really a non-issue. So it, they're kind of happy. They don't, we don't have to do gifts too. Um, but it, it's discernment. Who is it coming from? How well do they know you or don't know you? Um, and if um, there's pressure on it, again, it's using, and it, it takes time. It takes time to develop that sometimes. So again, as I wrote in the chat, it's like, be patient with yourself and other people and, and how to be gracious. And, and so I hope that helped answer some of that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Hey, Jean, how about you? Can I ask you, can I put you on spot too? How would you handle that? Well, now I don't, I don't do any of the family get togethers. I don't accept the gifts, but in the past, you know, Although I didn't celebrate the holidays, you know, I would show up just as the family was there and, um, and I would let them give me things, but they wouldn't get anything from me. That's kind of how it worked out. But um, that's, you know, that's just how, but I used to give birthday gifts basically. Uh -huh. But from from 1985 until it came to torch the tribes, um, that's kind of how I operated. It was like that. Good. Doesn't you used to say something about gifts, about like giving the gifts and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, so to me, it seems like it's perfectly fine to accept the gift that you have been given. Oh. Yeah. Well, let me see what Cheryl. What do you say? Well, I'm in agreement with Lisa. It depends on who it's coming from. If it's coming from a family member or someone that you have already explained to them that you don't do Christmas and they keep saying Merry Christmas or giving you gifts, it's just like kind of have to lovingly reiterate the fact that you know please I've already told you this do not give me any gifts but just like last week I was in uh, Walmart and I worked at Walmart for 24 years and so I know a lot of people that still work there and they would come up to me and say even around Thanksgiving and they would say, well, happy Thanksgiving or Merry Christmas. And you just have to take it for how they mean it. Because they're not trying to be vicious. They don't, the ones that told me that do not know that I do not do the man-made holidays anymore. And so what I did when they said that and they were coming from a loving place, I just told them thank you, but I did not reciprocate. I did not tell them Happy Thanksgiving or Merry Christmas. I just said thank you, you know, and that's, I left it at that because mm -hmm. I wasn't going to go around when they're at work to make a, you know, big deal of no, 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 I don't celebrate Christmas. Right. You just have, like I said, reiterating here, but you have to, you have to, discern and see where it's coming from and in what spirit it's coming from. You know, and accept it how they meant it. When I stopped going to their holidays, um, the one thing that happened was that they learned their, pa their holidays were pagan. Because they'd ask me, well, why didn't you come? And I said, well, because it's a pagan holiday. Yeah. And although when I was there, they wouldn't say anything and they, you know, it was the family get together basically for me, but um, they, they wouldn't, <coughs> nothing would change. They wouldn't ask any questions. Mm -hmm. But now that I don't go to any of them, any of the holidays that are pagan holidays with the family, 
know, they're, 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 they're approaching me with, well, um, why not? Well, why not? Don't you love us? And I said, they're pagan holidays. And they, that's the only way they're hearing that they're pagan. Otherwise they don't still don't think they're pagan. If you go and you show up, you, they still don't think they're pagan. Mm -hmm. And I, for a long time, was hoping that they would learn that, even though I wasn't participating or buying gifts and things like that, when I was still trying to get together with the family. But there was no, none of, there was none of them coming to my side of the table and nobody asking questions about my side of the table, except, except for me getting the culture of shut up. You shut up, you don't talk about your stuff. That's your stuff, right? All right, so, you know, it, it, you definitely see Yahua dividing the, yeah, but they're finally realizing that their holidays are pagan. They don't know, they just didn't know. I finally had to say it. Yeah, that's good, Jean. I mean, yes, when we stand up for, for it and it does cause people who may not even think of it like that it to they may not question you know maybe if you're going but if you're not showing up that would breathe why doesn't jean prep you know come doesn't she love us yeah <laughs> she's too good for yeah. us right no you're not celebrating yahoo's holidays right Changing and thank you life. Yeah, yeah, and thank you, Cheryl, for sharing that. You know, one of the things, too, is when someone, because of where I work, you know, I have quite a few older gals, and um, they're always, you know, have a good holiday. And I, my response is, you enjoy your family. I hope you really enjoy your family. I'll see you next year, you know. I, I don't wish uh, them a holiday back or anything. I just say, you enjoy your family. We'll see you next year. You know, so as uh, Suzanne, how 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 do you feel about it? Yeah, well, you hire. That's such a good question. And even with um, you know being uh, having being not being around family members, having not being in env that environment where you are faced with these kinds of situations for a while, you forget. But like what I'm what I'm loving is what I'm hearing. The theme of our response is you know discernment. Uh, you know, let's let's really know who who's coming to us and stuff like that. I'm hearing uh, fruit of the spirit, really. I mean, uh, what an opportunity for us to exercise the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, you know, gentleness, faithfulness. And and really also um, we're talking, uh, in a, you know, if, if you feel ruach led, a great it's a great opportunity to open up the the history as to you know what we've learned tonight now we've got some uh, knowledge in our pockets that we can you know we can bring to the table if if they were curious or you know we really are the, the word of our testimony is um how one of the ways we overcome the devil so yeah excellent. yeah thank you good point uh megan <clears throat> Well, last year, my grandma finally, since my family's like four provinces away, so I don't really have to worry about the family thing. But my grandma last year finally admitted, well, you don't celebrate Christmas, so I won't be sending you any more cards. So that solved one issue with the cards from at least her. Um, I'm still known to get cards here and there. Who knows about this year or not? Haven't received anything yet. But yeah, with discernment is pretty much how I take a lot of that stuff. And, and then I know last week I was walking with a friend that's from our old Sunday church. And she actually admitted that, yeah, Christmas isn't in the Bible when she asked me about Christmas and why I didn't celebrate. And I'm like, well, it's not in the Bible. But she still is like, well, I saw, Ad I see Advent in the Bible and of course I'm like I haven't really grown up in the church so Advent's still a weird thing to me and how to even approach that topic so I even thought bringing up the whole topic of what Advent is because I know some people will get that approached yeah and I I couldn't I think 
I, don't, I think that's associated with the Christian church. I mean, the it's Catholic like, church. I think it's more Catholic than yeah, anything. Yeah, that's kind of but my they still throw it. they still throw it into a lot of Protestant churches. Yeah. And of course, some people also bring across the subject, well, do you celebrate Hanukkah to me? And of course, like, some do kind of know my past, where I was actually, when I did come to know Yahua. I started out in the Hebrew messianic movement with the friends of ours. Um, and then to get the, just the foundation, I, we, me and my mom entered into the Sunday church for a bit. And then of course we outgrew that and then came back. And then that's how we also found Torah to the tribes. And we've been on this page for, well, ever since. Mm. All right. Yeah. All right. I see several are saying good night and good night. We're going to, um, I want to hit Tanya and we're going to close with prayer. So Tanya. Um, I just wanted to add that I tend to get a lot further faster with complete strangers than with family. Um, for example, there was an older gentleman at Publix, um, a bagger was helping me put groceries in the back of my truck and he just, you know, Merry Christmas. I said, I genuinely appreciate your sentiment. I said, but our family does not, um, do the materialistic Christmas thing. And in fact, we actually keep the pay, the um, traditions that the first disciples in the Bible kept and we keep those biblical festivals. And he was very interested and he was asking me questions. And so I talked to him a little bit more. And um, so I tend to get a lot further because there isn't that kind of animosity with what do you mean you're rejecting our traditions of our family type mm -hmm. thing. Um, so I just wanted to add that as well. It's taken a lot longer to get that far with my family even though I come from a point of just setting an example to them um, and not, you know, yes. going to bat with them over it. And now, as you know, they're finally asking questions. My grandmother has thrown away all of her Christmas decorations and she's finally realizing that, hey, you've been right this whole time, but it's taken six years to get to that point with her. Um, so I just wanted to add that too. That's a good point. You know, I mean, what does it say? The prophet is not uh recognize it in his own land but you know it is sometimes it is easier with um complete strangers and they're they're more open to it because there's so many emotions and memories that are associated with that day for families i did want to share yahira that uh, one of the things that you know i, I think we're, we're all understanding um you know as we move with people giving us gifts I personally am, um, as much as I stand for what I believe, there are some people that do not um, adhere to what I believe. I happen to, you know, I, I look at things when they do give me a gift, because I do have from time to time, um, a, usually it's a client, to be honest with you, um, who gives me something. And if she's, she gives me a gift, I actually do accept it because I know where she's coming from. I've been doing her hair for a whole year. I have, I see her all the time. We have a connection or, and this is maybe usually the older women. Um, however, I do not bring the gift into my home. I accept it in the salon, but I do not, especially if it has any tie to do anything with Christmas, I do not bring it into my home. I trash it. I do have... People give me money at this time of year, but see, it's because they love me and they've known me and they've, you know, I, I accept that because I know it's not a Christmas gift. It, I mean, it is a Christmas gift in response to, you know, it is this time of year, but I've serviced them. They love me. I love them. I don't give gifts back. I, I do bless them. I will, you know, thank them. And if it is a Christmas card, I do not bring the Christmas card in my house. I trash it. So I think it is a lot of discernment on what you, you know, who's giving you the gift and what it, you know, what is it really for? Um, I know, like, I did have to set some parameters with my mother in regards to giving to Joshua on that day. And um, I, but I did it in love. I said, mom, you know, I love you so much. And I love God so much. 
And I just see in his word that it's not something that I should, we should be celebrating. And she did bring up all of these things, you know, it's about Christ, it's about this. And I said, I understand you see it that way. But where we are at, we do not want to observe it or have anything um, connected to it. So let's make it, let's go out to dinner on this day. And you can give Joshua a gift on that day, on a different day. And um, just as much as I honor you and your home, I would appreciate it if you would honor us in our home like that. And I just did it in love. I, and she understood where I was coming from. And, and it's interesting because out of seven children, she says that I am the most spiritual. And they are all Mormon and they go to church every Sunday and they do all of their traditional things that they do, you know, but yet she thinks that I'm the most spiritual. And um, I just think of that's just the light of Yahusha that's radiating out. That's what she's seeing in me. And I'm standing up for what I believe. And I use it. And I tell her, you just like you stand up for what you believe. I'm standing up for what I believe. And so I think that we've had a great topic tonight. I want to thank everyone for participating. It was um, it was very interesting. I love everybody's shares and their questions. It's it's great to get to know all of you a little bit better too. So, all right, let's go ahead and close it up in prayer. Um, I do have a couple. If you don't mind, can I pray? All right. No objection, so I guess I'll take it. So I have a little list. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Yahoo, we come before you tonight and just with joy in our heart because we're celebrating you, Father. You and all your wonderful things that you do for us. I mean, your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness that you give us each and every day is just <sighs> kind of overwhelming, Father. And we're so thankful for it. We're so thankful that you've revealed yourself to us and you've shown us, Father, how you want to be loved. And because we love you so much, we want to do it in the way that you love us to do it in. And therefore, Father, we renounce anything that we have attached ourselves from the past to this present moment with any idol worshiping or any uh, Christmas spirit or anything that has been we have put before you, Father. We bind it and cast it out of our lives because we love you more than anything. And we ask you to fill us with your Ruach HaKodesh and to forgive us, Father, of those things. Because our heart and our eyes are on you, Yahuwah. The shalom and the peace that you give us is, is so overwhelming. And, and even sometimes we don't understand what we did to deserve it, but you know. You called us, you've chosen us, you've created us as each, each as unique daughters. And may we walk in your presence every day of our life, Father. And Father, we just thank you that you have opened up our eyes to the real truth of what is before us. We ask you to watch over our families, those that, um, are following the, that Christmas tradition, Father, I just pray you that you would open up their eyes. Use us, Father, as tools, as servants to, to help them see the truth of all things. Bless our families. Bless those that are sick, Father, that they may be healed in Yahushua's name. Bless those that are lost, that they would be found. Bless those that are having anxiety, and anxiousness at this time of year, Father, that you would give them shalom and calmness. Watch over those that are trying to get somewhere on their own. And I'm asking you to bless them to open up their eyes to see that you are the way, Yahushua is the way, the truth, and the light. And it is only through him that we will return to you and have that shalom and peace and hope 
And we're just thankful, Father. I pray for you, Hira, and, and her, um, her visit with her in-laws, Father, that she would have that servant-like attitude, like Yahusha. He came to serve, not to get. He came to serve. May she serve her in-laws in the ways that you would want her to, and that her boys would be shine brightly the light of Yahusha through them that she would just be even overwhelmed with the love that will overflow and that she would also receive the truth. And we pray for Kim, Father, and her situation. Oh, what a joy it is to have your son home with you. And, and may she focus on that, loving her son, caring for him, knowing what his love language is, that she would be able to love him the way he needs to be loved and that that would be the memory not the christmas memory but that that would be the memory of how much his mother loves him i actually see kim um getting out her baby pictures with him and sharing the joy that he was as a son raising him up and that they can celebrate that. And Father, I just thank you, Father, that you are with us as we leave this meeting. We ask you to watch over those that are not here. I pray for Gabriella, Father, that you would, whatever she's uh, going through, you would, that you would help her and be with her through that. She would not feel that anxiousness that she would trust you, put your trust in you, and that you would have her find favor with the people that she needs to um, find favor with to get the things done that she needs to have done. And yet that she would be able to come with the testimony of how you intervene in this situation, Father. We pray favor over her life, Father. We pray for those that are not here because of whatever reason, Father, that you are with them and that you would continue and watch over them. We thank you, Yahuwah, for this time together and we'll look forward to another. And we just pray these things in Yahusha's mighty name. Amen. Amen.